Every summer of my childhood began with all of my hopes and dreams for a fun and carefree vacation being thrown directly out of the window approximately one week after school let out. My mom would drag me and my sister down to the local library and enroll us in the dreaded summer reading program. They gave you a book, a couple crayons, and a reading map that I'm pretty sure was actually just a P.F. Chang's kids menu. And every time you read a book, you got to fill out a square, and if you made it to the end, you'd win like an all-expenses-paid vacation to Nepal or some shit. I don't know because I never made it past the free bookmark reward. I fucking hated reading as a kid. Like, my parents seriously should have known that I was busy laying the foundations for my future YouTube empire by playing Animal Crossing for 12 hours a day. I hated reading. Until I realized that Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone was one of the approved books for the summer reading program. I definitely don't think of this series as highly now that I'm an adult, but back in the day, these were the shit. Expecto Patronum! JK Rowling had an incredible idea for another world, and she filled it to the brim with incredible characters, locations, creatures, a couple of plot holes, and a wild story to top it all off. And then she went insane. How's it going, assholes? My name is The Stellar J, and Harry Potter is such an iconic series that when you make a Harry Potter video game, you automatically have an advantage over every other wizard game. Hogwarts Legacy made me piss my fucking pants when I first saw the trailer, and I cannot wait to play it next year in 2021. Okay? What the fuck? Now that we finally have a release date, people are getting really excited for this game. Which leads us to the million dollar question. Should you even be excited for this game? Me? Well, you see, I did a little bit of research, and I found some fucked up shit. The last game that Avalanche Software made was a Cars 3 tie-in game that looked like this. Say it with me. ka -chow! Man, that felt good. And before that, it was Disney Infinity. Not a track record that inspires confidence. They had this crazy haunted shop trailer, but the scariest part of the whole thing was the three words at the end that read, PlayStation Exclusive Quest. Why? You're not going to move any hardware with one exclusive quest. This is fucking ridiculous. Gaming industry, I am fucking begging you, do not allow this to become a trend. The marketing for this game feels like it is being done by an insane person. Only four of the 22 videos on the YouTube channel are trailers. There are an equal amount of of trailers and ASMR videos on a YouTube channel advertising a video game. That's kind of fucked up. But, but, there is a dragon in the game. So who knows, it actually might be fucking awesome. From what I can tell, the main objective of this game is to run around Hogwarts like a little kid in a McDonald's playground. The attention to detail here is genuinely fucking insane, but what I'm more excited about is all the new shit they're adding. The biggest problem with the other Harry Potter games is that they basically all just retell the story of the movies. And because of that, we don't really get to see anything that's not already in the movies. The developers mentioned that they know fans are going to be curious about what's beyond the Forbidden Forest, Hogsmeade, and the Black Lake. And fuck. I didn't even know I was curious about that until he brought it up, but god damn it, he's got a point. We get to see this little magnifying glass speck of the wizarding world in the movies and the books, but in this game, it looks like we're going all fucking over the place. Look, they got this Chamber of Secrets looking ass area, they got the swamp, the volcano, uh, Detroit, Michigan, it looks like we're gonna be exploring a lot of ancient ruins, there is a lot to be excited about in terms of exploration. But if the locations turn out to be some bullshit place where you just buy a different type of potion ingredient, I don't think anyone is going to be motivated to explore outside of Hogwarts. There needs to be actual cool prizes for for exploring places like a dope new spell or creature. That would be fucking cool. Personally, I would love to see this game lean into the darker side of Harry Potter that we see in the later parts of the series. The people who grew up reading and watching this are old now. We are ready to see some fucked up shit. I've been to Ohio before, okay? Anything else you show me, I can take it. The Haunted Shop looks like the answer to that demand. There are moving mannequins, shifting hallways, a Dracula laugh, and some of the most bone-chilling eye tracking I've ever seen in my life. But again, some greedy fucking bastard decided to sell out and taint the experience for everyone else. That being said, this video is sponsored by Atlas VPN, baby. Have a private Christmas and a safe new year with Atlas VPN Premium. Click the link in the video description below and grab this Christmas deal right now for just $1.70 per month, plus six months for free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. A lot of people ask me how I study Japanese. You see, I learned Japanese by watching movies and anime completely in Japanese with Japanese subtitles. But even though they're supported, American Netflix won't let you choose Japanese subtitles unless you're in Japan. But that's okay because boom, one click from Atlas VPN and suddenly Netflix thinks you're there. For a joke in my last video, I had to look up Pokimane ass compilation and watch a number of very disturbing videos. And I don't really want my college campus to know about that. And when I'm searching for shit like that, it is not uncommon for me to come across some pretty suspicious links that might threaten my security. Again, one click and Atlas VPN makes your connection private and blocks trackers, ads, and malware. And if I do feel like buying that Ravenclaw butt plug, Atlas can connect me to a country where it's cheaper. It can even alert you when your private data is being used online. Enjoy the best VPN deal on the market across unlimited devices for just $1.70 per month plus six months for free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Click the 
link in the video description below and grab this Christmas deal right now. Okay, back to the video. The biggest thing working for this game is the fact that it's set in the Harry Potter universe. There is so much potential for locations and spells and dungeons. But the biggest thing working against this game is also the fact that it's set in the Harry Potter universe. Guess how many named spells there are in the original Harry Potter books? 84. That's it? That's only 12 spells per book in a series about wizards. And most of them just aren't that cool. Like really? Rapero? That's a spell? Yeah, nice one, Rolling. Indie wizard games are so fucking creative these days. Some of these guys have like three developers and are pushing 400 spells. What the fuck is going on, bro? Oh my god, it's piss! To keep up, Hogwarts Legacy has a lot of work to do, and luckily, they are doing a lot of shit right. Spells are cooldown instead of mana base, which incentivizes players to get creative and integrate combos, which 10 times out of 10 makes combat more fun. They're revamping a lot of those old boring spells like Descendo and Accio to make them look actually somewhat interesting. Look, they have this dash spell you can throw barrels at enemies, or my favorite, blue lightning. Ladies and gentlemen, finally a compromise between yellow lightning and ugly lightning. I will be using the shit out of this spell. This looks fucking awesome. That being said, laser beam battles seem to have somehow wormed their way into this game. Avalanche? No. Stop it. Delete this and the combat will be perfect. Honestly, the scariest thing about this game is the story we've been shown so far. Here's what we know. There is a goblin rebellion, and also there might be some evil wizards who are on their side. That is going to be the most boring shit I've ever heard in my entire life. I am hoping to God that this is some kind of fake out marketing stunt and the actual story is literally anything else. Ranrock's loyalists are capable of so much more than people realize. Really? That was the line that they decided to put in the trailer? Is this Harry Potter or fucking Downton Abbey? I've basically given up all hope for the main storyline at this point, but we did get to see a little bit into the side character quest lines. The only issue with these is that they are just not made equal. One of them is a courageous Gryffindor, which, you know, where have we seen that before? One of them is just Girl Hagrid, and one of them is a Slytherin who can teach us dark magic as he tries to break a family curse? Like, can we just have that be the main storyline? That sounds fucking awesome. A big question I've always had with Harry Potter's story is that if every bad wizard is Slytherin, then why not just get rid of Slytherin as a house? Like, this house literally serves the same function as Japanese internment camps in World War II. Like, they even live in the fucking dungeon, bro. No way. JK Rowling claims that not all of them are bad, but we literally never get to see one that isn't a piece of shit. I seriously hope they're able to change that with this game, and if the other side quests are half as interesting, then the marketing team is doing a fucking terrible job with their trailers. They said they're not including Quidditch in this game, which, to be honest, I'm not super disappointed about. I played Quidditch World Cup on my DS when I was little, and that that shit fucking sucked. The AI was awful, you could hardly tell what was happening on the screen, the controls were only slightly preferable to getting pushed down a slide made of sandpaper, and after every single goal they play this fucking eye melting animation. So if Hogwarts Legacy doesn't have Quidditch, you know, maybe I'm okay with that. But if you're not gonna include Quidditch, you gotta have some actual cool side quests. I think it'd be fucking dope if Girl Haggard took us on this big long quest that ended with us taming the dragon or something. But so far all we've seen is Snake Boy and this one where you gather a bunch of gobstones for some toddler. Okay, what else is there? JK Rowling has zero involvement, which is always good, there are no microtransactions, and you can jump. But back to that million dollar question, am I excited for this game? You could say I'm on the fence. The fate of whether this game will be the next Wizard of Legend or the next Quidditch World Cup is in the hands of a company whose last game was fucking Cars. I, I, I still cannot believe that shit. Say it with me. Ka-chow! Ah, <sighs> whatever, man. We'll see you when it comes out. Thank you for 100k. Subscribe if you like mills. Follow me on Twitch if you got a big ass. And see you in 2023.